Today we're going to compare the performance of three different types of vibration switches to sensing pure fan unbalance on large cooling tower fans. We will do this using a long stroke shaker to simulate fan movement at low frequencies and large displacements. This is the long stroke shaker. It has the capacity to go about six or a little more than six inches. The three switches are a traditional mechanical vibration switch, a new linear adjusting mechanical vibration switch, and an electronic vibration switch. The uh, specification we're going to use for this test will come from the new CTI standard for vibration limits in cooling towers. These are broadband limits for field erected or fiberglass cooling towers or factory assembled steel or fiberglass cooling and we will be using the shutdown limit of 0.7 inches per second peak at 100 RPM and 300 RPM. A traditional uh, mechanical vibration switch is set by adjusting the adjustment on the switch so that it can make it past startup and then going a quarter of a turn beyond that. What we're going to do for this test is I have the switch set so it cannot be reset. And I'm going to go one quarter of a turn beyond that position. So this is a much more sensitive setting than would normally be used in the field. Unlike the mechanical switches, where we really don't know what the set point is, we just make that one quarter turn on the adjusting screw, and the electronic switch, we can program it to exactly what we want. For this test, the switch is programmed to 0.7 inches per second per the shutdown spec of the CTI standard, and the delays are uh, not enabled. Uh, you would typically use the delay, like a startup delay, so that you can get by the extra vibration during a startup without tripping the switch. The, uh, the basic equipment we're using for this uh, demonstration is the long stroke shaker that will allow us to do low frequency, high amplitude inputs a back-to-back -back calibration standard so we can verify our inputs, the three switches, traditional mechanical vibration switch, the electronic vibration switch, and the new linear adjusting mechanical vibration switch, and three LEDs so you can see when they trip. When any given switch trips, an LED light will come on indicating that it has, uh, it has occurred. Our first test condition will simulate a 100 RPM fan, uh, pure unbalance. And I will initialize the long stroke shaker here so that we can shake it. And what I'll do is gradually increase the amplitude on it until we see one of the switches trip. And you can tell that a switch is tripped from the LEDs. You can see that the center LED trip that's associated with the center switch, which is the electronic switch, we verified these amplitudes using the calibration standard. Since the mechanical switches trip due to inertial forces, you can see that the acceleration is so low that it cannot possibly trip these switches. So what we're going to do is increase the amplitude now and see how much pure unbalance and motion it would take to trip these switches.
and it becomes pretty obvious that at that frequency, unbalance alone will not trip the mechanical switch. It's going to take a secondary effect, like banging up against something to trip it. Now you can see that that was enough to trip the linear adjust switch, and it took a little bit more force, more of an impact, to trip the traditional mechanical switch. We're going to run a similar test at 5 hertz that will simulate a 300 RPM fan. So I'll get the straight shaker ready for use. And again, I'm going to gradually turn up the amplitude and see which switch uh, trips first. You can see right away it's the electronic switch that tripped immediately when it reached the 0.7 uh, inches per second, which is about, I think, uh, 30 or 40 mils of displacement. So let's continue on up and see if at this frequency a pure unbalanced condition could get high enough to uh, trip uh, the switch. You can see the linear adjust switch did trip, but we still haven't tripped the traditional switch. So I'll move it up some more. And again, we don't have enough vibration there. Oh, finally, we tripped it when we started hitting. Bring that back down. So it's pretty clearly, you can pretty clearly see that an electronic switch does a much better job in picking up an unbalanced condition than a mechanical switch, and in fact, the mechanical switch cannot pick up a pure unbalanced condition. It has to rely on some secondary effect, like some sort of impact, to trip it.